Welcome to Janet Crawley Art and Yoga channel. Today we're going to have a about a maybe 45-50 minute practice of warming up and then working through some of the bigger muscles, the standing leg muscles, and then cooling down and having a wonderful, wonderful savasana at the end. So I'm glad you are all here with me. I hope you have your mats ready. And if you need anything else, like a blanket to be comfortable for your knees or blocks, if you like to use blocks to support you in any posture, please do have that available. So I'd like for you to find a seat. I'm sitting now on a <clears throat> bolster here, but you can sit in any way that is comfortable so that your spine stays long and tall. Your shoulders are relaxed down from your ears. You can close your eyes. Notice your breath as it comes across your nostrils. And begin to maybe expand your breath a little bit. <clears throat> Filling the lungs a little bit deeper and exhaling a little slower. We're really relaxing into the breath. This breathing brings us to the present moment and it's a wonderful tool for us to use throughout our practice as we allow the breath to guide our movements. This brings us to a feeling of being connected to the earth as we sit tall and feel our legs grounded into the earth. We feel the energy moving up through the spine. We can imagine this energy from the earth moving up through the spine, from the back of the neck and out the crown of the head as we connect from earth to heaven. And as you continue to breathe here and connect to your body, I'd like to read to you um, a, an excerpt from the Bhagavad Gita it's Arjuna, it's from the epic of the Bhagavad Gita. Rest here, relax into who you really are. You are magnificence itself. Let go of resistance to everything. And what remains is the perfect flow of effortless life. What you are unwilling to feel remains as tension, becomes gnawing, grows into addiction. Restore the capacity to feel fully, to allow the experience without flinching. And the addiction, the gnawing, the tension, dissolve. Rest here and things are simple. So I invite you now to come down onto your back and allow your legs to rest elongated and allow your back muscles to just begin to relax into the floor. If you'd like to have your knees bent, which may help your lower back feel a little uh, more at ease, you sit, you're welcome to do that. Allow the shoulders to press down gently or really more of a relaxing down into the mat and turn your palms up in this way to help your body relax even deeper. Continue your breathing here, noticing the belly rising and 
and falling as you exhale. When we come to our practice, we always let go of expectations and judgments and competitions. We move and we breathe and we stay in this present moment through our breath. It's very important to connect to the body, to your own body, and to notice if you are, happen to feel any pinching or any pain in any posture, then I ask you to soften that posture or come out of that pose and simply breathe and relax. Let's bring our left knee in towards our chest, bringing our left arm around it. And just hug in that left knee. Maybe you'd like to straighten your right leg out. Or we can even kind of bring that left knee out towards the side and then maybe back towards the center, just exploring a little bit into the hip area. Just whatever feels good. You're connecting to your body and how it wants to move today. Easy goes. Let's release that knee down and we'll bring the other knee in. Right knee, right arm here on the knee and we can guide it outward and inward. Noticing how we feel. Let's bring the other knee up as well. So we have both knees in and we're gonna just hug them in gently. Both hands are on the kneecaps. And let's leave the hands on the kneecaps and just push them away. And then draw them back in towards the chest and then gently push them away. We're exhaling as we bring the knees in and we're Inhaling and expanding as we press the knees away. Just noticing how we feel today. Let's release the feet down and let the arms come down onto the mat, palms down. <clears throat> our knees are going to be bent and our feet are hip distance wide from each other. Toes are pointing towards the end of the mat. We're gonna to begin to move into bridge pose. So when we move into bridge, we lift from the base of the spine first. So we begin to lift the hips up, pressing into the rest of the back and continue lifting on an inhale, lifting the spine off of the mat. Our shoulder blades hug in. We may even walk the shoulder blades towards each other a little bit. <clears throat> and breathe here. Three breaths. And then we begin to return to the mat one vertebra at a time, very slowly rolling back down widening the shoulders as we move towards the mat. And then we notice, we just allow ourselves to relax on the floor and we notice what that might have done, if there's any change in the body. And when you're ready, we're going to move up again. And you can do this at your own pace. I'll let you just do this about five times, taking as much time as you need to. <clears throat> We're going to flow up and down with our spine at your own pace. We're bringing fluid into the spine.
whenever you have reached your five, just rest there on the mat and notice. See if there's any change in any part of your body. Then we're gonna bring the knees into the chest again. Just hug them in for a moment. Then keep the knees bent and relax the arms out to the side. We're gonna move into a spinal twist. So lower the knees over to the right side, but leave them hovering over the floor. Let the shoulder blades stay on the mat and your eyes can stay gazing towards the ceiling or you can look the opposite direction of your knees over your other hand. And then we inhale back to the center of the knees and we exhale over to the other side, hovering over the floor, shoulder blades in the floor, breathing, getting into a twist in the spine, inhaling back to center and exhaling to the right, inhaling back to center and exhaling to the left. Let's do that two more times. One more time on each side. We come back to center and release the feet back down. I'd like to bring your hands underneath your neck. You can interlace your fingers here if you'd like. You're going to support your neck. Your elbows are out wide. Now we're gonna just do some little crunches, a little ab crunches. So we're gonna draw the belly in, squeeze the belly in as we lift the head to the ceiling. So we're not trying to bend the neck and come towards the knees. We're just lifting the head and engaging the belly, squeezing and releasing with the head down and lifting and squeezing and releasing down. Let's do 10 of these. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and release. And we're going to keep our knees bent. We're going to move into bridge again. So our arms are alongside the body and we bend the knees a lot, press into the feet and lift the base of the spine up first and roll up the spine, hips towards the ceiling. And exhale back down slowly, letting each vertebra touch the mat very slowly at your own pace. Let's do five of these. This is four. Three. Two. One, and we rest. We notice any changes in the body. This pausing between postures is really helpful because it allows us to move inward to the body and notice the subtle sensations in the body. So we're mindfully moving into movement. Mindful movement. Let's roll over onto our side. <clears throat> and we're going to come up onto all fours here. 
bringing the knees hip distance wide and the hands shoulder width wide. We'll bring wide fingers on the mat. If you have any issues with your wrists here, you can use fist for wrist where you make a fist and you place it down underneath your shoulder. So your joints are lined up and your um, knuckles are facing each other. So this is another option for cat and cow. On, in cat and cow, we arch the spine on cat, we exhale, drop the head, draw in the belly, and then we inhale in cow. Looking up, <clears throat> exhale, cat, inhale, cow. <clears throat> and let's do 10 of these. <clears throat> this is three. Four, five. Knowing we're bringing fluid between the vertebra, bathing the vertebra, creating <clears throat> a nice flow of energy through the spine. Seven. Eight, and two more. And ten. And let's sit back into child pose now. So in child pose, if you have a difficulty, like I do sometimes, I can't quite fold all the way down and get my head to the floor. So I like to support my head with my fists here, and I bring my bum up slightly, and I call this puppy, where our hips are a little higher. So either child pose, where you're sitting all the way back, or puppy pose. And this is a place where we're relaxing. We're lengthening the spine. We're supporting the head. If we're in child pose, maybe our head is all the way down on the mat, or perhaps we're stacking our hands as I am. And we can rock the head gently, massaging between that third eye area, between the eyebrows. And we are activating the rest and relax response in the body. child pose or puppy pose. Let's take one more nice deep breath here. And we're going to reach our hands forward with wide fingers so our elbows are straight as we're sitting back in child pose. But we're going to inhale forward into kneeling planks. We come forward, create a nice strong arm here. Shoulders are over the hands. We lift in the belly. We don't allow this back to come down into a hammock. And we also don't have our bum up like a tent. So like an angled board. And then we exhale back, leaving the hands there. We're gonna just flow here, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Inhaling forward, feeling strong in the shoulders. Pressing into the arms so that the shoulder girdle is activated behind you. Right between the shoulder blades, nice and strong. The next time we come forward here, let's give a little bend in the elbows into a baby push up and lift back up and to child pose. Inhaling forward to kneeling plank, exhale down and lift back up. Exhale to child pose. Let's do that a few more times. Really warming up the body here. And one more. Sitting back in child pose for just a moment so we can 
feel what that feels like. With our arms extended still, we're going to inhale forward, curl our toes under, and lift the heel or lift the knees off of the mat into a downward facing dog. We press the arms out. We allow the knees to be bent and lengthen the spine by lowering the head down, lining them up between our elbows that are hugging in towards the ears. And let's just simply walk forward into forward fold here. And in forward fold, if you have a stack of books instead of a block, or if you have a block here, you could place your hands on the block, or you could place your hands down on the floor. And then we're going to circle sweep up, hinging at the hip so that our hip, our back stays flat. Inhaling, lifting, reaching tall, and releasing the hands down. We come into mountain pose here. Standing tall, our feet are parallel to each other. We're drawing the feet in towards each other and the hips in towards the, or the thighs in towards each other. Engaging the belly, lifting here, squeezing through the glutes a little bit, relaxing the shoulders. This is mountain pose. A lot of activity happening here, a lot of um, lengthening up and grounding into the floor. Shoulder blades relaxed away. And let's take a couple breaths here. From here, we're going to move into moonflower and sunflower. So we're going to take our feet wide on the mat facing our toes maybe out towards angles a little bit. We're gonna reach the arms up here, and then on it for Moonflower, we're exhaling, bending the knees towards the toes, hugging shoulder, or elbows in here, and inhaling up. Exhaling, inhaling. We're breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the nose. And then we're going to move now from here, reaching tall, we're going to change this into sunflower, exhaling and hinging forward with a flat back, scooping up sunflowers, tossing them in the air. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Strong legs, big breath, moving in through the nose and out through the nose. So we're warming up the inside the inner temperature of the body. Let's move back into moonflower for a couple. One, two, and sunflower for a couple. One, two, and bring the hands together. Draw them down to the heart. Walk toes, heels, toes, heels back together. Feet are parallel. And we're gonna sit back into chair. As we inhale, we reach up. Hands can come together to your heart and we can sit back into chair. Aligning our knees over our ankles. Inhale, lifting. I'm gonna to go to the side so you can see the alignment of my knees. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Each time you come up, you squeeze the glutes, squeeze the strong body. Good, do a couple more of those at your own pace. And from here, we're gonna stand tall again, 
reach up with the left arm and let's reach up with the right arm hold on to the left hand and lift up and over for a lateral flex lifting it's a side stretch we're thinking about the left rib cage here lifting up and stretching keep breathing and we come back to center, relax the arms down, roll the shoulders, pause between these two places, take a breath and just notice your body. Remembering to take care of your body, if anything is painful or pinching, please don't do that posture, but just rest. Let's circle sweep up again, reaching tall, holding onto the right wrist this time, and we're pulling that right wrist up and over, stretching through the rib cage. And coming back to center, relaxing the arms, roll the shoulders both directions. And then I invite you to step to the top of your mat here, to one end or the top of your mat. And we're going to move into some um, warrior one stance and warrior two stance. So let's start off by bringing the hands to the waist. And we're going to be balancing slightly on our right foot as we step back about three feet into warrior one. We pivot the hips back towards the front of our mat. We feel our feet firmly planted and they're about hip distance wide. So we have a nice balance here. Our arms can come all the way up here or we can bring them to cactus arms or you could even bring them to your heart. So there's many places to practice this move of warrior one. The idea of being very solid, strong, and grounded into the earth here. So any of these placements. Another option would be to bring your hands behind you, clasp them, and slide them down as you roll the shoulder blades back. This is really nice because uh, we have a tendency to roll our shoulders forward just because of the activities that we engage in during the day. And this helps to correct that. Warrior one. If our hands are down, let's release them, bring them up. We're gonna to move to warrior two. So our left arm is reaching back. We're pivoting the back foot so it's parallel to the end of the mat now. We gaze forward over the right hand and breathe, three good long breaths. And then let's step forward again, back to mountain. Remember that's Tadasana or mountain pose, standing tall, noticing, pausing between these two sides. And we're going to be stepping back with our right foot this time, but I will turn and look this way so that you can see me better. So hands at your heart or on your, on your waist, and we're going to step back with the right foot this time, about three feet. Plant that back foot into the mat. It's facing forward about a 45 degree angle. Our right, or excuse me, our left knee is lined up over our ankle and we're pivoting the hips. So we square the hips the best we can towards the front of the mat. And then we choose our warrior one hands. Maybe you'd like to move one arm up at a time and exhale it down. And another arm, the other one up and exhale it down. And this is a really nice way to move in your warrior one. 
You also have all those other options we showed you earlier. You should feel these legs being strong and engaged in the floor, nice and solid so we're not wobbling here. If you feel like you're wobbling a little, check your feet and make sure they're wide enough so that you're not uh, feeling unbalanced. And from here, we reach the arms up and the right arm widens out to the side. We pivot the back foot so it's parallel to the end of the mat. We draw the belly in, we tuck the tailbone slightly, reach the arms out, gaze down on this left knee and make sure that it's lined up through the, to the middle toes here so it's not bending in. And if you would like here in Warrior Two, we can move with our breath. We can exhale the front back hand and inhale again. Exhale and touch. Inhale and open. And one last time, inhale and touch. Good, and let's release the hands down. Find our place in standing mountain and pause and notice. Just close your eyes. Notice how your body feels. And we're gonna move into a balance now. We're gonna do a simple tree balance. We can bring our hands to our heart. We're gonna extend the right toes out to the side. So we lift up tall through the hips. We draw this right toe in. And if you have a little trouble with balancing or you're just for today even, maybe you feel a little off balance, you can use a chair next to you or a wall. And then we can lift this right knee straight up in front of us. You can keep the foot alongside the thigh if you'd like. It kind of gives you a little bit more connection to the body. And then we can lift the hands, branches. It helps to look down on the floor at a non-moving spot with your hands. And we breathe here, maybe three or four breaths. And also, if you're smiling, it actually helps you balance. Even if you don't feel like smiling, you can smile and it will help you balance. And we'll bring the hands back together, lower that foot down, and let's release the hands and just notice how we feel. Taking a nice deep breath in and a long, slow exhale. Ah. Now we're going to balance on the other side. So we bring the hands to the heart. We extend the left toes out, standing on the right leg. Sweep this left foot in and lift the left leg up, standing tall. And if you're ready, you can bring your arms up. Stretch out the leaves. <laughs> Smile helps you balance. Gazing on that non-moving spot. Breathing. And let's bring our hands back together and lower that foot down. And relax the arms. Ah, good job. Now pat yourself. Good job. Let's give ourselves a big hug. Walk the fingers back behind your, your shoulders if you can. Twist from one side to the other. Back and forth. Notice which arm is on top. We're going to switch it. We're going to open the arms wide and hug with the other arm on top. Great, that's excellent. All right, now I invite you to come back down onto the floor. <clears throat> We're gonna cool down a little bit here. 
onto all fours. Hands are shoulder width distance and knees are hip distance wide. We're going to do a little bit more balance here too. So we're extending the right toes out on the mat. And then reaching the left arm. This is called spinal balance. And if you feel stable through the hips, you can lift that right leg and press through the heel. Feel elongated, dynamic tension from the fingertips to the uh, base of the foot. We keep our spine in alignment, our neck in alignment with the spine. Breathing here. And then let's return to the mat. Hand and knee arrive at the same time. We'll go to the other side, extending the left toe and spinal balance, reaching the right arm, lifting when you're ready. We keep the knee, or excuse me, we keep the extended leg only hip distance high. Don't go up any higher. We put too much stress in our low back. We're breathing here, staying steady and strong, feeling that dynamic tension as we reach to opposite directions. Our belly is lifted in, and we return to the mat. Now I invite you to do that on your own three more times on each side. And we're just kind of flowing through those. This is three for me. And when you're ready, we're going to join together in moving into cat and cow again. Arching the spine on cat, exhaling, inhaling into cow, exhale, inhale. Let's do this two more times. Good, and then we're going to meet down here on the mat, bringing the soles of our feet together in butterfly. And you can draw these feet in as close as you'd like to, but I'd like for you to be able to sit up tall with a long spine rather than rolling the spine here. If you need to, in order to stay tall, you can bring your hands behind you to support yourself. And we're opening through the inner thigh in butterfly. Breathing in, breathing out, noticing how our body feels after the work we've done for it. And then we extend those legs out, rotate the ankles the other direction, press through the heel and point the toe, press and point, press and point, press and point. And then we just have one more challenge here on the mat. So our feet are hip distance wide. Our hands <clears throat> are on the mat with fingers facing our feet. <clears throat> We're going to move into tabletop and breathe five breaths if we can. So we inhale and lift up, trying to bring our belly parallel to the floor. Breathing Engage those glutes, engage the thighs, press into the arms. And one more big breath here. Ah, release down. Let's let ourselves come all the way down on 
down to the mat. Ah, oh, that feels really good, doesn't it? Relax the spine and the floor. Let the knees be bent if you'd like to. That feels good. Big inhale and a long, slow exhale here. And then we're going to draw the knees in. Leave the arms out to the side and lower the knees over to one side. They can go all the way to the floor if, if you're able. But keep your shoulder blades on the mat. So that might be constricting you from coming all the way to the floor. It just depends on your body. And we lift up and move to the other side. Nice deep breaths, relaxing. Closing your eyes, just connecting into the body. And then we're going to come back into the center and hug those knees in one more time, whatever feels good. <clears throat> and let's take our hands over the kneecaps and then widen the knees. So we're going to make circles with the knees now. You just notice how the hips feel as we circle the knees, big circles. And we can go the other direction. Keep the breath moving in and out, so don't hold the breath. And we can release the feet down. And now we come to the most wonderful part of the practice, which sometimes is difficult for people because it's hard for them to let their mind relax. But this is final savasana. And during final savasana, it's like a surrender of your body to the earth. You can cover yourself up with a blanket or put socks on if you need to. In my yoga classes at the community center, I hand out scented cloths that have lavender so that you can place them over your eyes. Very relaxing. And during final savasana, you're just going to stay with your eyes closed closed and relax completely, letting go of every muscle tension that you can find in your body. And I will let you know when it's time to come out of final savasana. Breathing, relaxing now. As you're relaxing, I'm going to read the uh, from Arjuna, from the epic Bhagavad Gita again. So you can hear these words as you're resting. Rest here. Relax into who you really are. You are magnificence itself. Let go of resistance to everything. And what remains is the perfect flow of effortless life. What you're unwilling to feel remains as tension becomes gnawing and grows into addiction. Restore the capacity to feel fully, to allow the experience without flinching. 
and the addiction, the gnawing, the tension dissolve. Rest here and things are simple. As you are resting, you just allow your breath to move in and out without any concern or any control. Just surrendering a little more with each exhale, knowing that you are loved, you are lovable. And that everything is all right. And to feel your fingers and your toes of wiggling a little, finding a little movement. And then you can roll onto your sides and come up into a comfortable seated place where we can close our class together. Bringing our hands together. <clears throat> going to close our class with an alm which you can join in with me wherever you are so take a big breath in channel and put any comment down that you'd like. Blessings.